has YouTube become a listening platform? Is it more of a place that you go to for kind of background noise? Now we have ways to distribute the full thing and then cut out highlights. That means you reevaluate what's the role of YouTube in that new ecosystem. The core philosophy behind making YouTube videos, I think, has changed. Everyone is doing these longer videos. It's not like it's a whole lot more work. You can watch a bunch of probably amazing things in that five minutes or one hopefully good thing. <laughs> You can't have a 30, 35 minute video and have it suck. There are a lot of people who can do five minutes of interesting content and cannot do 20 minutes of interesting content on the same topic. Hey, welcome to the Create Unknown, the home of Make Something Mean Something. We are here live on Discord with many familiar faces of our patrons. If you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash the create unknown and if you want to hang out with us join our discord i am kevin lieber and with me as always is matthew Tabor. yeah and real quick i want to do a shout out to another podcast real weird sickos evolved out of the create unknown community dojangles charles khan uh tom videogre was there at the beginning uh they've just hit their two year anniversary on a podcast and we've mentioned before how exceedingly rare it is for a podcast to go beyond 10 episodes mm -hmm. literally 85 90 percent of podcasts do not make it past 10 episodes so when a couple people do a thing for two years it is absolutely remarkable. And that's one of those projects. We saw these people come together in the discord. They found each other and started a thing and, and refined it. Uh, they keep doing it and it's awesome. It's awesome. It's just so, so good to see that. That's the positive note. Uh, I don't know if this is the next one is positive or negative. I almost, I almost committed a, a murder last week. That sounds and, negative. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it would have changed my life. It would have changed my life it, because I do have the password for Vsauce too. I, 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 I could find somebody else for this podcast. Kevin, you were one step away, one step away on my lawn from giving it all to me. <laughs> had you take, had you taken one step backwards, you, it, it's over for you. That, that's true. So, uh, for, for those unfamiliar, which is everyone, <laughs> As to what Matt's talking about, yeah. there is a colossal sinkhole on his property that he, that I saw and like rightfully so freaked out about because first of all, it's <laughs> gigantic. I mean, it must be three foot in diameter and then it's a big one. Yeah. A probably four and a half feet deep before you hit anything. Uh, then there's more. And then there's more after that. Yeah, that is indiscernible. Yeah. It's like a black hole. I tried to, to look in it and use a flashlight and the light just was devoured by the hole. <laughs> you couldn't see I anything. Have, I, have, I have never <laughs> seen anything, you know, like erase light. You, you put a flashlight into a thing, you see where the flashlight points. No, there was absolutely no light at all in that hole. And it goes in a couple different directions. I don't know what it is. I don't know uh, where it goes or how big that is. But uh, one more, one more step backwards, and you are exploring a portal to hell. One more step backwards, and my leg is definitely broken. And the best part of this is that you did not see fit to mention at any point as I'm walking around your property to say, "Hey, uh, by the way, uh, perchance you come upon this gigantic." evil hole in the ground you might want to step aside sir <laughs> well, it didn't occur to me you know i mean it's one of those things too that you you stop thinking about you know you see it and and you know it's like ooh, i need to make sure that every single person i talk to avoids this portal to hell like no you just make sure you avoid it and it, it <laughs> didn't really occur to me <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yes. but it, it was, you were so close. It, it was really close. was like, yeah, when you stopped, when you stopped walking backwards, like you'd looked over your shoulder and there's that balancing act where, you know, there's one foot on the ground and one foot stepping and you, you change your mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I <laughs> like teetering. I, <laughs> I, I like my femur. I like my, my tibia is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Well, you yeah. could have had two of them just in smaller pieces. That's true. I true. true. <laughs> yeah. It's going to split them up. Uh, luckily yeah. I avoided the hole, but if anyone, you know, wants to see a, a, a sinkhole, and just travel down to the Tabor farm, which it's still not covered. You know, I suggested perhaps you throw like a bit of plywood over top of it, but no, that, that rang on false ears. Who, who's going to, who's going to be there? Who's on my lawn? Anybody who's on my lawn? I was. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're like the only person in years who has been <laughs> that isn't related to me. Um, <laughs> uh, it, well, it is on the path of where the guy fills up uh, like oil and propane and all of that stuff. But because it's summer, I'm not getting heating oil or anything. And so, so you know, there's no danger of anybody actually walking on it. And, you know, if they're, if they're there, they're uninvited. And I have a right to, I have a right to defend my lawn. <laughs> and if, uh, you know, landmines are illegal, holes in the ground aren't. You don't need a permit for that. Booby traps are illegal. That's not a booby trap. I mean, if I kind put, of. if I made it like a, a punji pit, if I put, you know, like sharpened reeds and bamboo, <laughs> <in the bottom. laughs> which I'm surprised you haven't at this point, it's the next logical progression. <laughs> well, now I have plausible deniability to be like, Ooh, isn't that weird that this just kind of appeared out of nowhere? What bad luck that this person happened to step in. So I'm <laughs> absolved of all responsibility at yeah. that point. Yeah. And fall like fall onto it and get impaled like the pit for mortal Kombat. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk YouTube for a bit because some new, some new things have come to light, you know, some, yes. some revelations have occurred over the past couple of weeks. And I'll start with, uh, this delightful lunch that I had with art, AKA gamer from Mars. A couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, we talked. What did you eat? What oh, did we you eat for lunch. We went to a diner that just serves breakfast, so we all had breakfast for lunch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I love. I don't know. I like diner fare. A big diner guy, which is like a very kind of East Coast thing. I think it is. No, you it know? definitely is, especially uh, Northeast. Northeast. You know, yeah. uh, New New England and Mid Atlantic is is diner diner life. So th that's really it for me. I'm not interested in the YouTube conversation or anything important that you talked about. Now that I know the food, I'm, I'm just going to go on mute for Oh, you don't know the I'm food. Done. So, so my, my standard <laughs> diner fare slop is an American cheese omelet with home fries, mm -hmm. some wheat toast, some bacon, call it a day. That is my standard yeah. go-to. It's like the baseline. I support that. It's like, if you're going to go to a diner, you just get standard. The diner food. That's to me like cartoon yep. diner food. And I eat the yep. cartoon diner food. Um, if if for some reason I'm not in a breakfast mood, I'll just get a burger because that's like the other cartoon diner food to me. It's burger with like big fat steak fries. Anyway, uh, you know, we talked a lot of YouTube because that's kind of what you do when you hang out with fellow YouTubers. And I had a bunch of takeaways that I really wanted to share with you and share with everyone and also just get people's feedback on and what they think about this sort of shift that may have occurred in the landscape of audience behavior on YouTube as a result, as a really a sort of direct result and response to the rise of swipeable content, primarily TikTok, but now in the past couple of years, shorts on YouTube as well. And here, here's the... There's sort of like the headline of this discussion, which is, is YouTube or has YouTube become a listening platform in, in sort of, you know, recent months and years more so than it was in the past? Is it more of a place that you go to for kind of background noise rather than the place that you go to to be visually stimulated and entertained by video content. What do you think about that? It's hard to evaluate, first of all, because the way I use YouTube is, uh, you know, you never know how, um, how close it is to the average user. You don't really know. Uh, I use it in a, a way that's probably pretty unique, 
compared to most people just because of what I do during the days and why I do it uh, and my particular hobbies and interests, which is is really primarily what I use YouTube for. Um, I also like listening to shows. I think I've mentioned before, I like Scott Adams show in the morning because I like his energy. Uh, I, it's, it's a nice thing at 10 AM, which is absolute clockwork. I don't think, I don't think he has missed or been late in memory. I cannot recall the last time he didn't have a show at exactly 10 AM, which is 7 AM for him. He's on the West coast, I believe in California. That's remarkable. That is remarkable. It's like a, a, a radio show, you know, like a slot. The fact that he's that tight with it when he doesn't have to be. Some days he could get going at 1010 and it wouldn't matter. Yeah, but, but wait, wait, wait. Think about how ridiculously disciplined you have to be to be a newspaper cartoonist. So the, he oh, yeah. he was, a you know, his claim to fame is Dilbert, which is a syndicated comic. Well, one of his claims to fame. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that is the... That is like the most one of the most clockwork creative disciplines that th that exists. Maybe the most clockwork creative discipline on earth is being a syndicated newspaper cartoonist because you've got to crank out a new one of those comics or you or or you're done. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, one of the shows where I, I'm not. My eyes are not glued to Scott Adams' face at ten in the morning. I look up occasionally. Um, he's he's animated sometimes with his uh performances and and i'll look then he does some great voices of like if, if, if there's a, a a comment that is particularly stupid he will read that comment over and over in the stupidest voice he can muster <laughs> 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 that's really funny anyway i'm you know i'm, I'm going through uh, my email what's what's come in overnight what's come in in the morning i'm getting a sense of what I'm doing during the day and what order I'm going to do it in, uh, all the, the morning maintenance is what's happening. So, uh, if he had the camera turned off, it would make no difference to me. It, it just wouldn't, I'm not glued to it. I'm doing other things. Uh, it really is like a radio show then it is. Yeah. It's, it's podcasty in that sense. Then there are other things that the point is to watch. You know, I like, uh, antique firearms restoration videos where a guy will uh take a thing and uh you know break it down refinish it do what he's doing the point is to watch what he's doing as he talks about it so those are not listening videos right they're 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 almost how to-ish things that you have to watch or there's no point <laughs> right uh so there is some that still exists where my eyeballs are on it because they have to be uh, but then when we think of content like Vsauce 2, like the pain video that just came out, it's very well edited. It looks nice visually. You could watch it and enjoy that. If you just listened, I think you'd enjoy it just as much. Um, that's really different from a couple years ago when you went on YouTube to watch videos the same way you watch TV or watch a movie. That was the point. Aside from really crazy exceptions like an episode of the create unknown you know that you would put on and and listen to it uh you were watching youtube well now now there's less of that there's a lot less of that and it's it's increased the value of certain aspects and decreased the importance and value of some of the things that have been extremely important for 10 years i don't know what you've been sipping but you've got it all wrong it's time to commit to the leaf We've embraced the smoothness and surprising pick-me-up that tea provides. I literally drink it all day long, nearly a gallon a day, and it powers me through research, script writing, and forums on websites that I refuse to name here. But we don't drink normie NPC tea. We drink cultured and refined anime tea from the Dragon's Treasure. Kevin still likes the gunpowder green called Space Cowboy, and I've sampled nearly 40 Dragon's Treasure teas at this point. Lately, I've been slamming black teas like Kentucky Bourbon and Liquefied Berserk Despair. Scottish Breakfast is deep and peaty, and I smooth it over with Sebastian's Morning Earl Grey, which 
has the best vanilla cream taste I think I've ever had in a cup. Give me a pot of that with a hot meatball sub from Sal's Pizza and Brooks Barbecue Chicken to wash down my last meal on death row. I highly recommend the sampler packs. You'll want to try everything just like I did. I literally have not had one tea that I wouldn't be happy to reorder. The Dragon's Wings membership fuels new tea experimentation and the Tea of the Month Club provides a regularly scheduled surprise. And when you order from the Dragon's Treasure using code CREATE, you'll get 10% off your order. That's 10% off using the code CREATE at thedragonstreasure.com. The link's in the description. I think so. I definitely think so. I feel a, I feel a shift for sure. And you can see it with a lot of channels that are doing really well. So um, when I was having this discussion with Art, he brought up a channel that I can't remember off the, the top of my head, so I apologize. But the the point of the of bringing this up is that you know this person talks about some kind of drama or something that they notice on a podcast mm -hmm. but visually it's just a static image of george costanza from seinfeld covered in potato chips like <laughs> that that's all you look at it's just a picture of george costanza from seinfeld covered in potato chips i think maybe it was the summer of george episode i don't know but anyway that's it he just sticks that picture up, which is a funny picture, and then talks over it. And this channel is growing rapidly. It's getting hundreds of thousands of views per video, but it is not about what you're looking at. It's just about what you're hearing. So there's that. There's also been a tremendous rise in really long videos. So half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, you know, some some of these videos go up to five hours. So the the point is, is like uh, you mentioned that there are certain classes of videos that you need to see, you know, that I would kind of, mm -hmm. you know, categorize as like amazing visual videos. And that will always be the case that there are these amazing visual videos. You know, in the past, it was stuff like 1000 degree knife versus bowling ball or whatever, or like the, <laughs> right. you know, hydraulic press videos, things that you have to look at. Or yeah, like what's inside, what's inside. Yeah. Those restoration videos were, yeah, the thing is covered in rust. And then later it's like immaculately clean and restored perfectly. One thing that I th thought was really interesting recently is that uh, our good friend of the podcast, Destin Sandlin, AKA, smarter every day recently did one of those videos i mean he's one of the best ever at these styles especially kind of slow-mo like visually amazing videos and he did one recently of two bullets colliding mid-air this video is 36 minutes long yeah you know five years ago is that video even 15 minutes long oh. i doubt it I doubt it. I think you just kind of uh, show the thing. You you talk about your idea. You 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 explain the sort of hurdles that you had to clear in order to make it happen. Thanks for watching. Here's a sponsor at the end. Now now it's longer than a TV show. I mean, you know, a TV show when, once you account for commercials is around 22 minutes or so. You know, 36 is getting creeping close to an hour long. TV show. I think those are like 44 is, yeah. or something like that. I think around 44. Yeah. And if there was it, just before you, you keep going, I wanted to say if, if it did occur to somebody that I've got to do more than 15 minutes on this, they would have broken it up into several videos. Mm -hmm. They would have made it a two or a three stage thing. I, they, they just would not have, have made the one epic. They would have found a way, found a way to go piece by piece on it. Yeah, part one, part two, and, and part, and so there are a couple of facets to this. And the reason I bring that up is because I do think that it weaves into this discussion uh, because it's even something that Art brought up when we were having lunch is that he mentioned, you know, he listens to YouTube. He 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 clicks a video. He listens. If he needs to see something, if you know something triggers his attention through the audio that says that says to him, oh, I want to see what that looked like, he just scrubs back. 10, 20, 30 seconds and looks at the thing, turn, you know, turns his phone on or, or goes over to the tab that YouTube is playing in the, in the background of, looks at the thing and then goes back to just listening. And I could see that behavior working well with a 36 minute video of bullets colliding where it's like, 
sure, a lot of people are going to want to sit down and maybe watch that in like a living room experience on their TV. And it's perfect for that because it's basically watching a TV show. Other people, I mean, you, you want to see the bullets hit each other. But otherwise, I think you could probably just listen to Destin talk about his experience and sort of the, the journey of being able to, you know, figure this out and engineering it. And meanwhile, TikTok and shorts are ridiculously popular because it is the total opposite. It is just crack for your eyeballs that you're constantly just swiping through and getting sucked into I mean, this constant dopamine rush of what you're going to see next is this like roulette or no, like a slot machine of eye candy. What I think is different now is that now we have ways to, to distribute the full thing and then also to cut out highlights, for example, and, and make the most of those on a platform that did not exist five years ago. You had one shot at it. And really that meant that meant making a video that was dense and to the point and exciting all that. Well, now, yeah, you can have uh, a 36 minute explanation of bullets colliding, and then you can have a really great TikTok of the actual bullets colliding. You can break that into, into little pieces and each, each piece has a platform that is a fit for it. Uh, that means you reevaluate, well, what's the role of YouTube in that new ecosystem? You don't have to try to do everything in the YouTube video because you can do it elsewhere, you know, and it, it does work the other way. We don't talk to a lot of people who are, uh, nearly a hundred percent TikTok and trying to figure out how to go into YouTube. But if you wanted to, you could do the reverse of, of what we're talking about, where instead of breaking something into parts, you expand it on the longer form platform. The implications of this are there. It's really broad and deep. It, it changes how you think about the content that you make, where you put effort in, where you don't. Uh, so for example, you don't need every second of a video that is 36 minutes on YouTube or 20 minutes uh, of the pain video to be uh, classic nerd city level editing. Mm -hmm. You simply do not need that in a way that was awesome several years ago. Now, you do need the great editing for the 45 second TikTok because, you know, you, you got a bang in your 45 seconds. Uh, so it's like, okay, how do you, how do you make your thing uh, in a way that can be broken down on other platforms, in a way that you can cut your highlight reel uh, and also tell your full story in an efficient way that actually lets you make a 30 minute video. It doesn't take you all year. You know, if you're a documentary type person, like an Oki, your long videos are going to take a very long time. Uh, there's no way around that. But if it's you or Destin, it's like, all right, we can do this a little bit differently to tell the long form story in a way that doesn't completely crush us in terms of production. Well, well, to me, uh, it's just including the stuff that you had cut before. I mean, that's definitely been the case. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, how this, you know, manifests itself in what we do and what's going on with Vsauce 2. But, but since you brought Destin back up, I could even see that being the case for him with this bullet colliding video. All he's showing is the extra stuff that would have been scrapped five years ago. And now all of a sudden, yeah, it's a 36 minute video, but all that work had to be done anyway. But the, right. the sort of like the core philosophy behind making YouTube videos, I, th I think has changed or, or is certainly in the process of changing. Because when I look around at certainly like my colleagues and contemporaries on the science and, and EDU side, everyone is doing these longer videos. And, and I don't think... Well, I guess we could get into it a little bit more on, on specifically anecdotally on Vsauce 2. It's not like it's a whole lot more work because essentially, like I was trying to communicate when I was talking about Destin, when you're making these videos, you're like doing all of this research anyway. <laughs> you're reading right. all of this stuff anyway. You have to. And then in order to turn that into a 10 minute video, 
there's a lot of stuff you're leaving on the cutting room floor. Well, if you want to make that a 20 minute video, you just pick, don't cut the stuff out. You just don't stick it on the floor. You just keep it in the video. <laughs> and now it's 20 right. minutes. I mean, so there was a video that we did a couple months ago about, about happiness, the concept of happiness that was around 10 minutes long. And I received a comment from someone who I went to school with, who I didn't even know watched Vsauce 2, just reached out sort of, you know, out of the blue, really out of the blue, actually, to say, you know, hey, I really, really liked that video that you did. I wish it was 20 minutes long. This is what he said. He said, I really liked it. I wish it was twice as long. Both of, the, both of these suggestions were completely unprompted. It wasn't like I was fishing for suggestions here. It was just like out of the blue, this guy um, who I'm friends with and went to school with 20 years ago was like, hey, that video was cool. I wish it was twice as long. Okay, that's interesting. That is an interesting piece. When, when you talk about you know listening to people and, and absorbing feedback, that's a pretty important piece of feedback to listen to and to absorb because it is totally unsolicited. There's no incentive for him to, to say this. It's, it's, it's so out of left field that you can't help but notice. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Oh, and it, it speaks to how people are consuming the content, you know, and I wonder what, I wonder what the cutoff is. So, <clears throat> so if, uh, if a video is five minutes long, okay, then I can see people thinking, well, I don't want to watch one five minute video. I want to swipe through shorts and watch, you know, eight 40 second things. Yeah. Right. It, it pushes them toward the short part. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. I want, let, let me, yeah. let me just re say that because that's really important. What you said, you can, you can watch a bunch of probably amazing things in that five minutes or one hopefully good thing <laughs> in that five yeah, minutes. Thing. Like that cost analysis is, is very clear. It's That's easy. Great. It's easy to do that trade. Yeah. And I wonder where, what the, uh, where you draw the line, where, where viewers tend to draw the line where it's like, is it a 15 minute video where it's no, I would rather sit down and watch an episode of this thing and commit to it and tune out a little bit, uh, for 15 minutes instead of thinking, no, I want to sit down and, and swipe through and see a bunch of cool things. I wish, I wish we knew where that line was. If it was at five minutes or nine minutes or 15 or whatever. I mean, we're focusing at least in the near future on longer form stuff because the topics also fit with it, you know, and we're, we're both kicking ourselves a little bit on the happiness video for not making it 20 or 25 minutes. It could have been. We we made it. We made sure it was fast paced, and I, I wouldn't call it dense because it it was still pre presented in a, a, a comfortable narrative. You know, it wasn't five minutes. It was ten, but it could have been twenty five. <laughs> it could have been twenty five. It could have been twenty, uh, like the pain video was, and people have responded very very well to that. Uh, it, it does matter too between genres. I'd say. You know, the long video stuff really started with with commentary and drama because that is largely opinion based. You can make a 45 minute analysis of a situation where you're really just talking about goofy stuff and ripping on this person and saying this other person is, is getting a raw deal and they're actually in the right. You know, it's a talk show kind of thing. It's really easy to make that long. And we saw the hyper examples of it. A few years ago with the right opinion was one of the first to do this. He was making videos that were an hour long, and then he made one that was over four, four hours long. Well, hey, uh, a four hour video on the science of happiness is like beyond PhD, uh, <laughs> you know, or master's thesis level, you know, research. Oh, it's easier for some people than others. Uh, but even the, even the things that require a lot of research, very specific writing, which your videos require, you can't use the wrong word because there are implications for describing a thing wrong when you're talking about math or science. You simply can't get it wrong, whereas you can use kind of the right word when you're talking about, uh, you know, drama with Tipster and Keffels. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, right. 
<laughs> right. This is a non-factor there. Uh, but you can still take the, the, the really delicate things, like what you do, and construct that narrative in a different way, in a longer form way that touches on more areas, goes into uh, appropriate tangents that really fills it out and adds to the whole thing. That would have been murder five years ago. Your retention would die. You know, I, I don't know what the rules. I, I kind of forget this, but the thing that that you have always cut the most from, you know, what I've I've pitched in scripts is tangent stuff. Mm-hmm. Just because it it distracted a viewer, it took them down a path that they they wouldn't. You know, too few would come back from that path. Or like historical and, stuff. Like historical yeah, yeah. background stuff. I, I've I've always been like, eh, eh, let's cut that. That's right. That's right. And and that was the right move in 2017. Uh, I, I bet you know we didn't do a lot of A and B testing because uh, it's kind of generating failure to do it that way. But had we taken a script that was full of background information and historical stuff, oh, I think right on those spots you would have seen the retention graph dip down. That slope would have been low at those points. Now, I think it's flat. Yeah. I think that's what holds people into content. Mm-hmm. Now, it's it's nuts that this liability five years ago may be the biggest strength. And we're going to see people succeed or fail based on their ability to be interesting in a more comprehensive way. Destin, again, is a great example of this. We know him uh, because he's been on the platform for so many years. We know that he is just straight up engaging, charming, and full of of knowledge. Yeah, he's a genius. He could go on yes. forever about anything, and it's worth right. listening to. Yeah, he, uh, he easily he's could start making fun. hour-long videos, and people would watch them, and they'd be right. awesome. No problem. He has... He has the skill set that plays into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think you do as well. Yeah, it's, it's a very, you know, V saucy wheelhouse, right? Um, well, other it's a people- V saucy wheelha- wheelha- wheelhouse ugh, because Michael has been doing 20 plus minute videos for a long time. Well, I mean, longer than pretty much anybody else. Pretty much anyone else. I mean, he, he specifically started doing those a really long time ago because he didn't see anybody else doing longer videos. And he wants to do what other people aren't doing, so that's what he did. So in many ways, as we're talking about how this is brand new, Michael was doing it on Vsauce 1 a while ago. But what I do think is brand new is the culture around it. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, aside from the videos just being really interesting on their face, he was an outlier because it was so different. It was like, whoa, a 25-minute video on the Bonnock tarski paradox this is so weird i have to watch it right it stood out uh now that's not standing out now that's the norm and i think that that's what's really really interesting is that this is the norm now and the you know obviously the question is why we touched on the tiktok factor which i think is a really important factor but here's another factor i want to throw out that is the rick beato (laughs) <laughs> hypothesis oh, no. the rick beato hypothesis which is that kids don't like music anymore and if kids don't like music anymore they still want to have something on in the background and you know a lot of that can be like streaming youtube gaming streams twitch streams podcasts i guess but also perhaps now they could also be longer youtube videos that like you said rather than I'm not going to click on a six minute video because then in six minutes I have to find another video that I want to watch. I'll click oh, on, true, yeah. I'll, I'll click on this 36 minute video about bullets colliding because I know that I have a familiar voice that I like, who's knowledgeable and I trust of Destin to listen to for the next half an hour. And then in half an hour, I'll figure out what to click on next. That's a big difference. It is. And that's okay as a task. It's, it's a normal expectation to give 30, 40 minutes to a thing and then have to find another one. You're right. That's that's actually an obnoxious factor that five minutes later, you're back where you started. That, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah I, I hadn't thought of that. Confused and uh, alone. 
<laughs> that's right. But yeah, if you click something that's even 20 minutes long, you're good for a, a substantial amount of time. That's yeah. it, it makes me think of why I watch uh, certain shows. So uh, th- this is going to this, this one's not going to resonate with the kids. Oh, God, we're going back. To, we're going back to uh, PBS Masterpiece Theater mm. for this. Very contemporary. Uh, there's well, it actually is. It is. Uh, the show that I really like is called Endeavor, uh, which is a, a, a prequel of uh, Inspector Morse, which was very popular back in the day. Uh, and Endeavor episodes come out. You know, one came out last night, for example, and they are movies. They are two hour things where when it's presented without ads, it's about 90 minutes. I like that. And I like uh, Father Brown, which is also a mix of old and contemporary GK Chesterton uh, wrote these 50 years ago. And there was a successful father Brown series in the seventies. The new father Brown is uh, the Weasley dad from Harry Potter, Mark Williams. Oh. He's fantastic. Oh, he's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, anyway, they're straight up murder mystery. One hour long. It's in its 10th season. I know that I can pop a father Brown on. And it's not going to be the greatest thing I've ever watched. Whereas Endeavor is excellent. It's really like top notch in in an engaging way. Whereas Father Brown is that formulaic, you know. Comfort food show. Comfort food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no surprises in Father Brown. Uh, but I can pop that on and I'm good for 45 minutes. Or if it's Endeavor, I'm good for 90 And I'm willing to pop those on precisely to solve my problem of what am I going to do for an hour? I'm willing to take, uh, in the father Brown case, let's say a six out of 10 in entertainment for an hour guaranteed than mess around with anything else, which very well may be a 10 out of 10, but I kind of don't want the task. I I do. It's not kind of don't No, I straight up do not want to play that game. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm happy with my six out of 10. And if I'm a sub to Smarter Every Day or Vsauce 2 and I like these guys, I'm cool with 20, 30 minutes of of that content. It solves a big, big problem for me. I think that works in an incredibly similar, similar way. And the, the more you trend towards short, which some people have no alternative. Animators are not animating 30 minute videos. No, no al- of, although uh, shout out to Meat Canyon on the most recent episode that he did with his Melvin character, which is a, a 10 or 11 minute short, which is incredible. I mean, that's basically making that's how long Smiling Friends is. That's that's an adult swim yeah, length yeah. cartoon. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, definitely check that out if you guys haven't watched that. Well, the, you know, an animator with uh, 500 subs or 5000. Or 50,000. He's got a team. He's got a team. You know, yeah. Zach and Michael have a team and it takes them a long time. Look at, look at, you know, right. I don't know when season two of Smiley Friends is coming out, but it's not tomorrow. No, because it can't be. Nope. Doesn't work that way. Uh, so, right. It's, it's much easier for a drama YouTuber to fall into this, much harder for an animator to fall into it. But either way, the importance on certain aspects are very, very different now. I say that I watch Father Brown, even though it's formulaic, but the acting is good. The writing is good. It's never boring. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gritting my teeth and bearing it and saying, well, I just needed to eat an hour. No, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good TV. You do a great job with it. You can't have a 30, 35 minute video and have it suck. Mm-mm. You can't ramble. You can't put just dumb filler in it has to be interesting there are a lot of people who can do five minutes of interesting content and cannot do 20 minutes of interesting content on the same topic they are not capable of it or it takes them way way too long Mm -hmm. we we know that uh you could say to destin two hours from now we need a 30 minute video from you on this topic we hand him the index card with the topic written on it and he he'll he'll like sit down, turn the camera on, and make thirty minutes of engaging content. He can do that. Uh, that's not the norm. That's not the norm. You know, you can make content that's engaging on a a schedule that that very few people can. Well, 
there's a, a little bit of a no man's land here that I think a lot of people are going to fall into where their best approach is shortish form, you know, that five, six, seven, eight minute, maybe 10 minute, whatever content that is going to get eaten up by the changing desires of the audience where it's a little bit ignored by the people who want the short stuff or, you know, they, they do the, the shorts and the TikToks, or they go to the long stuff. And when those people try to extend it, it's going to take them way, way, way too long, or it's going to stink when they do it. I don't know who's going to live or die uh, with this. You know, I keep bringing up Destin because it's such a clear example. Um, or Derek, you know, you know Veritasium's Derek, videos yeah. have gotten longer and longer and uh, they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, Nile Red does, does, you know, some long deep dives on his weird ass experiments. That's going to work. That's going to be okay. There's no, there's no threat to the Nile Reds of this world. No. Uh, other people are not going to make it. They're not going to make it. Uh, and if we hadn't shifted things up a little bit, where is Vsauce 2 in a year? It's in that no man's land. No man's dead. land. Yeah. No man's land. Yeah. I think that this is a really important concept to, to put out there and for people to discuss and think about is, is there now this weird kind of video length zone that's serving no one <laughs> that that's really what it comes down to is there yeah. no audience basically for this length of content i don't know i mean it's worth thinking about today in a way that i don't think you had to think about five years ago but you know the landscapes change audiences tastes change as you can see with all of the uh flopping movies <laughs> <laughs> that Hollywood is is put putting out that just yeah. do terrible because people's tastes have changed as as to what they want from their blockbuster films. But um, we, I, I would be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that uh, you can see this clear distinction on Vsauce too. So this is not just us like waxing hypothetical on this stuff. This is not conceptual. Go to Vsauce two. Look at the views on the happiness video, which was a 10 minute video. Look at the views on the pain video, which is a 20 minute video. It's double the length and it's double the views. The metrics too, that you can't see that we can see in the studio are very similar. So you just have to trust us that, uh, the percentage of people clicking it is roughly similar. The percentage of retention is pretty similar. Uh, the percentage of likes, the percentage of comments really similar. Yeah. Like, uh, the audience response to these two pieces of content from the people who watched it are in line. They match up as, as close to identical as you really get in a thing like this, which is a measure of the quality of the video. Right. So the quality right. of the video is virtually, you know, indiscernible and yeah. uh, from, from one another. Same style, same writing, same uh, presentation, same editor. There's, this really is a, an apples to apples situation here. But one of them, like in the first seven days, which uh, that seven day mark got crossed as we're recording right now. When we started recording, it was six days, 23 hours on, on pain. We officially hit seven days. We can compare seven day performance between those two videos. And the longer one has three times the views, three times more people have wanted to see that video. That is, uh, it's beyond significant. I mean, especially with a channel that uh, is, is like legacy YouTube, you know, as old as it gets, which something like a Vsauce 2 is, there's not a tremendous amount of variation from video to video. Every once in a while, one of them, you know, sinks and dies where one of them blows up. But generally, it's pretty similar from one to the next because people know exactly what they're getting. There's a relatively well-defined audience. Uh, yeah, it, it's real close. So to have a three times multiplier is bonkers where there's no other indication of why there's a three times here. It's not like the percentage of people clicking it is three times higher. It's not. It's exactly the same. So something is different here. And it seems to be straight up what people want, what yeah. they want to do with their time. Yeah. Yeah. How, how they are engaging with YouTube, how they are looking at YouTube as a platform. What is YouTube's, you know, niche? What is its purpose in 2023? 
in this world of TikTok and, and swipeable content, what purpose does YouTube serve? And I don't know. This is just, you know, one, one hypothesis, hypothesis to throw out, but it seems to, to us at least that the, the growing use of YouTube in 2023 is, oh, oh, I also threw up a, a poll at Art's suggestion about how many people watch the video versus listen. And um, it, it was heavily, heavily watch. It was 85% watch, 15% listen. What was interesting, though, is that a lot of the comments suggested that they would typically listen, but they like the editing and the visuals so much of Vsauce 2 that they can't help, can't help but look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but even then, even then, there are people who would vote watch sort of with a caveat, right? Hmm, yeah. Which is saying like, yeah. I do watch, but that's only because like, I really like what you show. Otherwise I would just listen to this stuff. So I would love to hear from our listeners. You know, ironically, we don't have anything to look at um, right now. You know, in the future, we will uh, figure out, you know, having the cameras on and stuff for the podcast. That is in the plans for, for the end of this year, hopefully. But um, as of the last several years, you know, we haven't done that. And everyone who watches on YouTube is obviously just listening to the podcast. But I would like to hear from you guys. Have your viewing habits changed? Have your listening, have it, has it become more listening than watching? Have you, have you found yourself using YouTube differently than you used it in the past? Um, or, you know, does, does our, is our audience the type of, people who are who hate TikTok and you know don't even watch that anyway but that you know that could but that would be interesting to me as well as if TikTok isn't usurping your interest in visual stimulation yet you still find yourself gravitating towards the longer content anyway simply just to remove that confu sad lonely and confusion moment every 5 minutes that we discussed earlier because it's just an easier and better experience to be locked into something for longer stretches of time. I don't know. I would like to hear, you know, because I know Matt that you listen to a lot of YouTube. When I spoke to Art, he listened to a lot of YouTube. I don't know if you guys are outliers or if you're, you know, that statistical statistically significant significant percentage of people is just creeping closer and closer and closer to it outweighing visual. I don't know. I don't know. But something has changed. We are changing how we look at YouTube and how we do YouTube. And I'd love to hear from more people if they feel that there's been a change for them as well, for sure. No, I'm with that. We just have to, we need to know what you, what you do, <laughs> what you do with your YouTubes. Uh, it is super hard to get a good perspective on it when you're us because most of the people we talk to are people like art. You know, we talk to a lot of, uh, of creatives and that, that, that can't be representative of, of really what's happening, you know, but we do talk to, uh, people in the discord. You know, I remember a while ago and this was, must have been a year and a half ago. Um, Isaac showed us his, his daily stats on the YouTube app and he was hitting like four hours a day of content. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that. And I'm like, oh my God, how do you do this? How, how does one watch for four hours? Well, he, he, you know, would pop on shows that he liked and, and listen to them and well, sure. Okay. Well, in that context, then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like my, my audio book data, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. And that's really when, when we first started thinking about what's happening here and how are people, how are people living their YouTube lives? Um, and we recognize there's a tremendous variation among people. We just, but we want to know, we, we want to know, uh, how, how you do it and why you do it. Yeah. So leave a comment, please, uh, let us know. We are always interested in your feedback. Um, that'll do it for this week. We will be back next week. Thanks to all of our patrons for hanging out with us. And yeah, again, let us know how you're consuming YouTube and if, you know, your thoughts on it have changed in recent years or, or if you've been a listener type person for a while and maybe you're just glad that YouTubers like us are finally catching up to what you want. Either way, let us know. 
Um, thanks to all of our patrons for hanging out. Go to patreon.com slash the create unknown to support this podcast if you can and if you're interested. And we'll be back next week. Until then, see you, Space Cowboys. Thanks for listening to The Create Unknown. We make this show with the support of our patrons. 100% of that goes directly to keeping episodes going every week, and the recent support has been amazing. Sidpoke, NRM, Venture Addicts, Weezer Good, you all really do make this show happen. Thank you to the Tots and Dumpster crew, old and new, who save tiny little lives every month. Thank you to our grizzled, battle-hardened child infantry. Clemente De Los Santos, Dan the Latch, Demetrius Andrews, Erica, Farrakhan, Jen Mefasanti, Kevin Menard, Mikhail Steinke, Monahim, Natsu, Penny Peddler, Rise Bread, Ryan Kinder, Samuel Manser, Sean S., Sean Malone, and Tom Bidioger. And a tremendous shout out to our elite baby gang commanders. Atrocious Guff, Cat, Dojangles, Graham Robertson, James Gallagher, Jeff Davis, Orange Vanilla Coke, Patrick Pister, TCU's personal pilot, Andy, Ryan Carroll, Baseweight, Vinthos, Yetus Deletus, Jonas Walter, Nathan Robinson, Chelksies, and of course, Trevstead. You are the elite. Thank you as well to our indentured servants, producer-editor Ben Webster, Minecraft mogul Laterman, Discord kitten wrangler Conrad, and producer emeritus Dan Yoshua. Thanks to Baseweight for use of Created in the Unknown for the opening theme. Thanks to Electro Voice for giving us mics to sound good on top of it. And a special thanks to Main Gear for powering all of our PC endeavors. The Create Unknown is an unknown media production in partnership with Studio 71.